Our recent tour of the Berkshires continues with a stop at Mass Mocha, the sprawling contemporary art museum in North Adams. So sprawling that it's the only place in the country some artists can show their monumental works. Among the installations now on view, singer Annie Lennox's Life in Pieces. She is a singer and songwriter of soulful and palpable depth. Annie Lennox's career can be easily recorded in awards and some 90 million albums sold. But at Mass Moga, the Massachusetts Museum of Contemporary Art, we find her life lived and left. Annie is Scottish and is thinking about the form of a burial mound as a space where we uh, place objects after people die. Alexandra Fordis is a curator at Mass Mocha, where Lennox approached the museum a year ago about creating this installation, a giant dirt mound crowned with a piano. Lennox describes it as a dreamscape of memory made manifest. You are first faced with objects from Annie's past as a music maker. And as you move around the mound, it gets increasingly personal. Lennox has titled the piece, Now I Let You Go, a decidedly definitive title for someone who continues to wrestle with her bond to material memories. And what material she has. You'll find David Bowie here, and her own lyrics. There are mementos of her work as an activist fighting HIV and AIDS in Africa. Closer to home, her children's shoes. She wishes that everyone could have a mound. This idea that we don't have a way of metabolizing memory, of working through the objects that are left behind. But not all of us can be as sparkly as Annie Lennox, whose mound shimmers. Annie talked about the mound as looking like a performer standing under a spotlight on stage wearing something glittery. And that notion of the mound as a performer, the knowledge that sharing these things and being vulnerable in this way is in its own way a performance. Mass Mocha is a place that people come to experience full on. They wear it like clothes. Joseph Thompson is the founding director of Mass Mocha. He opened the place in 1986 in a series of brick factory buildings that once served as a textile mill and later an electronics plant. Today, it's where art and ideas are made, unlike anywhere else. Since it doubled in size two years ago, this has become the museum where artists come to create work that often can't be shown anywhere else, sometimes because of size, often for audacity. This is not necessarily a, you know, a perfectly polite place where the walls are white and the light is coming from above and the guards are dressed up and sit and tie. It's, you, you get to work for it here just a little bit. Mass Mocha rewards curiosity. Is museum the right word for this space? No, this is not a museum. I don't know what it is. I mean, uh, we stick with that word because it's in Mass Mocha. Uh, it's a center, it's a lab, it's two turntables and a microphone. <laughs> right now you'll find mammoth sculptures by late artist Louise Bourgeois, a fully immersive and enveloping series of light installations by James Turrell, and more mounds, these from the mind of artist Trenton Doyle Hancock. If there's anything that's our specialty at Mass Mocha, it's providing space and time to artists with big ideas. Trent takes us into the Moundverse. The Moundverse is a space that he created beginning with Torpedo Boy when he was 10, who is sort of the Superman to his Clark Kent. A world all his own, the Moundverse is charted out along a Candyland-like lane in Mass Mocha's largest gallery, one nearly the size of a football field. The mounds, according to Hancock, are depositories for memories and bits of discarded humanity. For children of the 1980s, it's a colorful climb into nostalgia. Trent is drawing on everything from the Cabbage Patch Kids and the Garbage Pail Kids to the Marvel Cinematic Universe to Greek gods. He is reaching back not only into the depths of his memory, uh, back to his childhood in Paris, Texas as the child of a family of evangelical Baptists, but also back into mythology. Now 35 years into her career, artist Jenny Holzer has long ruminated over language. She is interested in the way that language is read differently based on context and also material. In this installation at Mass Mocha, she returns to painting. Her focus here, 
government documents obtained through the Freedom of Information Act. The texts are uh, referring to violence as a wish list for interrogation techniques, or they are referring to abuses obliquely as treatment. So it is this kind of um, this way of using language to to shield rather than to uncover. How political is the work? Extremely political. Uh, the work deals, in terms of its subject matter, uh, with the lead up to the attacks on September 11th fundamentalism and the violent tendencies that might arise out of it. And from there, she moves on to the alleged abuses of detainees at Guantanamo Bay. At Mass MoCA, it's a moment of memories, from the harvesting to the harrowing.